Welcome to a bonus episode of the True Crime Tales. Today's episode is called, A New Trial for Scott Peterson in the Death of His Wife and Unborn Child. As we had reported in our previous podcast back on February 23rd about the death of Lacey Peterson, we are here to issue an update on what is happening to that case. It is still ongoing and taken up by a new group of attorneys. Scott Peterson asks for new DNA tests in a push to overturn the Lacey Peterson murder conviction. Scott Peterson appeared virtually in court on Tuesday nearly 20 years after he was convicted of killing his wife Lacey Peterson and their unborn child. Peterson zoomed into a San Mateo County courtroom from Mule Creek State Prison as part of an effort to overturn his November 2004 conviction. In January 2024, his case was picked up by the Los Angeles Innocence Project, a nonprofit organization whose attorneys work to exonerate incarcerated people through DNA testing and other scientific advances, as their website states. The court records shows that the Innocence Project lawyers representing Peterson asked a judge to order new DNA tests and allow them access to evidence tied to a burglary that occurred across the street from the Peterson's home. It is reported that Peterson did not speak much during the hearing except for formalities, such as, yes, your honor. The Innocence Project states, Scott Peterson, convicted of killing wife, Lacey, has case picked up by the LA Innocence Project. New evidence now supports Mr. Peterson's long-standing claim of innocence and raises many questions into who abducted and killed Lacey and Connor Peterson. Judge Hill, who presides over the status conference for Scott Peterson, set the following schedule for Peterson's future hearings with the LA Innocence Project. Hearing on motion to seal court records, April 16th, 9 a.m., Peterson will appear via Zoom. Hearing on DNA testing motion, May 29th, 9 a.m., Peterson will appear via Zoom. Hearing on the 1054.9 motion, July 15th, 9 a.m., Peterson will appear via Zoom. The LA Innocence Project was given a six-month deadline by the court to complete its Peterson investigation. Attorneys are seeking several items that were not discovered during a review of trial files by previous counsel, including a couple of items that materialized 20 years after Lacey Peterson's death. The items include evidence from an investigation into a December 2002 burglary and documents related to a van fire on Christmas Day 2002, in addition to Lacey Peterson's missing Croton watch. They are also requesting documents from witness interviews. What happened to Lacey Peterson? Lacey Peterson, 27, was eight months pregnant when she disappeared on Christmas Eve 2002. Scott Peterson, at the time, told officials that he last saw her that morning before he went fishing at Berkeley Marina, about 90 miles from the couple's home. When he came back home, he found their dog in the backyard, the house empty and Lacey's car in the driveway. Scott then took a shower before going to ask the neighbors if they had seen Lacey, and when they said they hadn't, he then called Lacey's mom, who also had not seen her. Lacey was then reported missing to the police. In April 2003, the body of a full-term fetus was found on the shoreline of San Francisco Bay by a couple walking their dog. The badly decomposing body of a woman was also found a few miles north of the Berkeley Marina. The bodies were later identified as Lacey's and her baby. Her body was found near where Scott said he was fishing on the day she disappeared. He was arrested on April 18, 2003, and charged with first-degree murder of his wife and second-degree murder of his child. As investigators searched for Lacey, they soon learned that Scott had an extramarital affair with his massage therapist, Amber Frey. Frey worked with investigators and testified at Scott's trial. New Sentence Scott Peterson gets new life sentence in wife's murder after years on death row. More than 20 years have passed since the murder of Lacey Peterson and her unborn child, 
a case that garnered ongoing national attention after she initially went missing in December of 2002. Her husband, Scott Peterson, was convicted of two counts of murder in 2004 in a controversial decision that was later upheld by the Supreme Court of California. Peterson's death sentence was commuted to life in prison after several appeals, but he has remained behind bars despite questions about the circumstantial evidence presented by the prosecution during the trial. Twenty years after the original sentencing, however, the innocence representatives for the Los Angeles branch stated that new evidence has surfaced proving Scott's innocence and argued his constitutional rights were violated during the original proceedings. The Innocence Project, an organization that seeks to exonerate wrongful convictions, has picked up Peterson's case, saying new evidence has surfaced that supports Peterson's claims of innocence. Already a case full of twists and turns, these new developments have re-sparked interest in what exactly happened to Lacey Peterson. Here is a timeline of the events thus far. Innocence Project takes on case. Scott Peterson, convicted of killing wife, Lacey, has case picked up by L.A. Innocence Project. Lacey Peterson, then eight months pregnant, is reported missing. The day prior, Lacey and Scott had visited her sister, Amy, at the salon where she worked around 5.45 p.m. At 8.30 p.m. that night, Lacey's mother, Sharon, talked to her daughter on the phone. These interactions were the last time Lacey was seen or heard from by anyone besides Scott. Scott told police he had last seen Lacey around 9.30 a.m. on December 24th, before he left their Modesto, California home to go fishing. Multiple people later testified that Scott had said he was out playing golf that day. Several neighbors reported seeing the couple's dog, Mackenzie, wandering by herself outside between 10.15 and 10.45 a.m. Later, Scott returned home to find the dog in their backyard, Lacey's car in the driveway and the house empty. After showering and changing his clothes, knocked on a neighbor's door to ask if they had seen his wife. He then called Sharon, asking if Lacey was with her. This is when it was discovered Lacey was nowhere to be found and both Scott and her stepfather reported her missing to police around 6 p.m. Scott told police that he had been out that afternoon fishing for sturgeon at the Berkeley Marina, about 90 miles from the couple's home. The case quickly drew national attention as authorities launched a search. Police later told news stations that they suspected Scott, off the bat, due to his cold, calculated demeanor when they arrived to search for his wife. They also cited his refusal to take a polygraph test as another point of suspicion. It was soon revealed that Scott had had an extramarital affair with his massage therapist, Amber Frey, who came forward when she found out he was a suspect in the case. In January, it was revealed he'd had two other such affairs before the one with Amber. Amber also claimed that Scott had told her on December 9th, weeks before Lacey's disappearance, that those would be his first Christmas without his wife who had died that year. By March, Lacey's case was reclassified from a missing person to a homicide. Local and federal police, along with thousands of volunteers, aided in the massive search, which eventually advertised a reward of $500,000. On April 13, 2003, the mutilated body of a full-term fetus was found on the shoreline of San Francisco Bay by a couple walking their dog. The following day, the badly decomposing body of a woman was found a few miles north of the Berkeley Marina, where Scott told investigators he had been fishing the day of Lacey's disappearance and about a mile away from the fetus. The corpse was decapitated and missing limbs. By April 18th, DNA testing confirmed the identity of the bodies as Lacey and her baby. The same day, Scott Peterson was arrested. He was found in La Jolla, California, with his dark hair dyed blonde and his car filled with $15,000 in cash, four cell phones, two driver's licenses, one being his brother's, several changes of clothes, and survival and camping gear. 
Because he was near the Mexico border, prosecutors accused him of planning to flee the country. Scott pleaded not guilty to counts of capital murder during an arrangement at Stanislaus County Superior Court and was appointed a public defender. November 12, 2004, Scott Peterson was found guilty of first-degree murder for the death of Lacey and second-degree murder for the death of their child on November 12, nine days after the jury began deliberation. The finding was controversial, as the prosecution had never presented a murder weapon or physical evidence linking Scott to Lacey's death. However, the verdict was met with cheers from the crowd gathered outside the courtroom, many of whom were holding signs calling for Scott's conviction. Following 11 hours of deliberation, the jury returned with a recommended sentence of death. The decision was made unanimously amongst the 12-person panel. March 16, 2005, judge sentences Scott Peterson to lethal injection. Lacey's family was allowed to make victim impact statements prior to the judge's final sentencing. After hearing an emotional testimony, Judge DeLucci upheld the jury's suggestion of the death penalty, sentencing Peterson to death by lethal injection. Scott was sent to San Quentin State Prison. The following month, on April 30th, Lacey's parents dropped their civil suit against Scott. July 5th, 2012 and November 24, 2015, Scott Peterson's attorney appeals. Scott's automatic appeal was submitted to the California Supreme Court on July 5th, accompanied by a 423-page brief document from Scott's attorney contesting the trial had been unfair. A second appeal was filed on November 24th, rehashing most of what was in the first, but also naming a replacement juror, alleging she had lied about being involved in past legal proceedings. August 24th, 2020, Peterson's death sentence was overturned. The Supreme Court of California issues a 7-0 decision on August 24th, upholding Scott's conviction, but overturning his death sentence. December 8, 2021, Peterson was resentenced. California Superior Court Judge Ann Christine Masolo sentenced Peterson on December 8, giving him life in prison without the possibility of parole for the murder of Lacey and a 15-year sentence for the death of his son, set to run concurrently. December 20, 2022, Peterson was denied a new trial. In December, Judge Masello denied a habeas petition filed by Scott in October, which alleged a juror had tainted the pool by lying about her history of domestic abuse during selection. Masello found there was no evidence to suggest this history had influenced her decision, nor was there an intention to conceal the information. January 18, 2024, LA Innocence Project picks up the case. The Innocence Project, an organization made up of lawyers who work to exonerate incarcerated people through DNA testing and other scientific advances, stated that they would be taking up Peterson's case in January of 2024. Representatives for the Los Angeles branch stated that some new evidence has surfaced proving Scott's innocence and argued his constitutional rights were violated during the original proceedings. They also pushed the fact that a van, that was found near the Peterson's home, was found burnt out, and had a mattress inside it that had blood stains on it. They say that if the DNA of the blood stains come back as Lacey's, that will prove that it was not Scott who killed his wife. More on the story as it evolves, so stay tuned here for more information on this case. Thanks for tuning into this bonus episode. Stay tuned again next week for another episode of the True Crime Tales. Be safe and see you again next time.